so what i'm going to do in next 10 minutes is uh, i'm going to look at touch the four themes delineated by uh, anindya and uh, pratosh about ict for development what's really happening to this particular field in terms of theory and empirical evidences looking at digital divide looking at what kind of impact the indian ict industry is having in society third one is what is the, the factors that is dealing with demand and supply so uh, these three themes will be dealt using three empirical studies being done by me okay one is looking at how urban micro enterprises are using icts looking at digital divide whether uh, the demand for icts are really there whether it's going to lead to some kind of economic development or not second one is looking at uh, uh, labor in indian it industry what kind of labor force what kind of demand and supply is there what kind of training is happening what kind of implication it has for ict for development Okay, third one is looking at multinational companies when they start their R&D centers, what they really do. Okay, what kind of implication, what, what these findings from these three studies are going to give some kind of insights to the themes we are ad being addressed now. I'll start with uh, ICT for development. If you look at ICT for development, this entire field is being, it's evolving. It has been dominated by people from computer science, people from uh, media and communication studies and people from, uh, to certain extent, uh, from uh, sociology and social anthropology. So you do not, economists are very, very less now. So if you look at this, the entire field, whether the linkage between the ICTs and development is really existing or not, it is completely inconclusive. In the sense, n very, very few studies clearly says that use of ICTs relates to the development, some kind of business growth or some kind of uh, information access. Okay, if you look at this, so it's completely inconclusive. We do not really know what is really happening. People are using ICTs, everything is fine, but in terms of reality, in terms of a real concrete return to their usage, it is not really there. Okay, so in terms of, uh, so if you're looking for some kind of independent studies that are providing some kind of inputs for this ICT for development debate, it is not really present. So that is the case. If you look at the global literature, most of the global literature says that telecenters are failure. Okay, what are the existing workers? You need to really look at alternative models of bringing development, not really looking at telecenter. It is not really working out. So you do not really force upon people. Okay, given this, uh, as a student of electronic uh, governance, I'm thoroughly confused, uh, sometimes really helpless. If you look at the material given by the government, if you make, look at the material given by the World Bank or United Nations, they clearly say that telecenters are bringing uh, information access, prosperity, economic development. But if you look at uh, the literature that is coming from academic literature, looking at uh, uh, peer-reviewed journals, none of them are supporting the, uh, supporting the rhetoric being provided by the government. So, as a, as, a, as a faculty member, I bring it to the class, two different material, what is this electronic governance project is all about, say, say for example in India, it is all price worthy, when you look at the peer reviewed material, they are completely contradictory. So still, if you look at this particular state of the field, you don't have any kind of concrete evidence to support ICTs are, going to lead, ICTs are leading development or electronic governance projects are in this particular country is going to bring the desired changes, it's not going to happen. So given this, uh, we looked at one small segment, say micro entrepreneurs. We looked at people who are running, having at least one hired worker, uh, having one hired worker, maximum of say 20 workers. Uh, what kind of ICTs they use, whether usage of ICT is leading to some kind of business growth in the, in the business firm, small businesses. Okay, so if you look at the rhetoric, if you look at the existing studies that are using small sample or anthropological work, that is clearly say that people are uh, uh, traveling less because of mobile phone, people are getting a lot of business through mobile phone, people are using mobile phone extensively, they are able to get information, news, everything. But that's not the case. When we did this probability sampling in Mumbai, collected data from 600 people, that is not the case. So we had around 25 questions related to ICTs, whether you use mobile phones, internet, internet cafes, use somebody else's mobile phone. Okay. So when you look at this, out of all the 21 items related to ICT access, mobile phone is leading the pack in the sense they have access to mobile phone. Still out of 600, 10% of the micro enterprises do not have mobile phones. So we are talking about now 2010 where okay, even micro enterprises are not buying mobile phones. So out of this 90% of the people are buying mobile phones, they are pre predominantly using for just calling and receiving calls, right? making calls to people. Uh, so when I ask them, okay, so there are questions related to real actual usage, there are questions related to the perception. When I ask them, do you think using mobile phone is bringing you more news information related to business? They say yes. So there is a clear disjoint between the perception, the way I am using mobile phone which is good for, good for me or good for my business and comparing the actual usage, there is a huge disjoint. disjoint. In the sense, there is no connection between the way I perceive about ICTs and the way I am using it. Okay. So uh, probably, uh, I do not really know whether there is a really a latent, con latent need for all these ICTs not really being exploited by the existing businesses. I do not really know. We need to explore this. This is related to uh, ICT for development debate. 
when i look at the uh, the production side of information communication technologies when you look at the, the labor issues so in terms of sustainability the government is providing a lot of incentives who are the people who are really garnering these benefits that are generated out of this ict industry uh, the, the nascan claims or nascan claims or the it industry claims that we have around 12 million people working in this industry that is the case so we did a small scale uh, survey and other existing studies that shows that a typical indian uh, software uh, programmer is okay you need to be a uh, you need to be a, a, a forward caste person not necessarily from a computer science background you need to be a male you need to be a hindu you need to coming from a semi urban background if you do not possess any of these characteristics you are less likely to get a job in it industry in india okay this is the this is the typical there are exceptions there are deviations but na typical average indian worker is this there is a case one hand you are promoting the it industry if you look at who's really getting this opportunities that are emerging especially employment opportunities that are emerging from the it industry it is only a small group of people now when you are talking about the sustainability issues related to this it industry we need to really think about this what we are going to do for a long period this is related to labor then there is a case uh, what about uh, moving this it industry out of the major towns bring it to the tier 2 cities okay if you uh, look at the existing work based on uh, uh, the, the based on the secondary characteristics we felt that it is not really going to work out uh, it is not going to be really sustainable for it industry to uh, stay and survive in a smaller town due to labor issues due to uh, lack of infrastructure there are problems related to it so uh, if you look at the labor issues it is not so really optimistic okay the third one is related to multinational companies when they start their r&d center so what we did is we uh, collected data from 40 people plus we have secondary data related to 160 people so uh, the entire idea has the innovation is going to overflow from these multinational companies into domestic companies so there is a knowledge diffusion that is going to happen so when we spoke to these people when i look at the secondary data the, the kind of linkage they have with local local uh, linkage with local science and technology systems is very very poor in the sense okay the interfirm linkages uh, whatever uh, linkages they have with uh, local companies is almost minimal whatever they have is typically related to labor related arrangement in the sense outsourcing some kind of internal outsourcing arrangement not a kind of uh, technological collaborators the kind of things you see in silicon valley related to small firms collaborating with the larger firms it is not really happening in india right now when you look at what kind of linkages they have with the universities it's typically training related there is no research collaborations with the universities typically training related you offer them internship you offer them placement you do not see much faculty members working in private industries okay you don't see uh, even you know uh, uh, people coming from uh, uh, industries working as uh, a faculty member in universities you don't see that much is happening so that is a case uh, where this knowledge diffusion is really happening where this this is going to happen if you look at it only the labor mobility people leave from one company to another company then there is a question mark here what is the nature of the work is being done in multinational companies if you look at this most of the work is being done it's in that mode of export enclaves the kind of work which is being done it's no linkage to the domestic markets if you look at the 160 companies what we looked at it only four or five companies are having some kind of work which is related to the domestic market most of the work is typically looking at the export market that is a case the skill level generated earned by this empl- employees there is a possibility that okay once you move out of the company you need to find an employment in a similar company to utilize the skills otherwise you end up uh, becoming a new worker if you join a domestic industry so that is the case there is no skill deficient so uh, when we are looking at policy incentives for uh, multinational companies to come in to enable innovation in the domestic industry that is going to be a big i i have a lot of question mark related to this so with this i stop thank you Good. Thank you.